That's the 1967 psychedelic jam band, The Beat of the Earth. The band's leader, Phil Perlman, grew up as the son of a prominent Jewish doctor in Southern California. In the 70s, Perlman changed his name to Seth Gadon, married a Catholic girl, and moved to this goat ranch in Winchester, California. Here, without running water or electricity, they homeschooled their four children. I've always referred to him as my go the goat baron next door, not face to face, obviously. Michael Rowe has lived next to the Gadon since 1989. I saw the kids out there as they were, you know, growing up and getting outside, and I was under the impression that uh, there were four girls because at a distance they all looked the same, they all had long hair. In reality, two of them were boys. They're the ones who started this dirty war, and they're the ones who will end it. One of those boys is this man, now 28 and known as Adam or Azam the American. He's the latest homegrown face of Al-Qaeda and a long way from his youthful dreams of helping the environment. I'm Adam Yadon, and this is Guitar Yadon, and we have been traveling around the United States. I'm driving to my parents' house right now. His younger brother, Omar, has talked about him on the website YouTube. My brother is Adam Gadon, uh, or also known as Adam the American. I never knew him as that, of course, but um, he's wanted... Yes, by the F FBI. It's a real bad light on my family. What is the status of Gadan today? He's heavily pursued. He knows it. With everything the United States government can levy against him. That's the FBI, the CIA, all of our colleagues in the intelligence community. When Adam was 17, he was into heavy metal music and lived here with his grandmother in Santa Ana, California. He wrote of that time on the Internet. My grandmother, a computer whiz, is hooked up to America online. I begin to visit the religion folders on AOL and the Usenet news groups where I found discussions on Islam to be the most intriguing. Adam attended this mosque and formally converted to Islam in 1995. Adam Gadan was radicalized at a young age. In almost every case we can find charismatic leadership that comes in and basically influences individuals and talks to them and really perverts Islam. It was here that Adam punched out an imam and met this man. Khalil Deek, an American citizen with shadowy links to Pakistan, Palestine, and Jordan. Khalil allegedly introduced Adam to bin Laden and al-Zawahiri. Shortly after the death of his grandfather in 1998, Adam disappeared in Pakistan. A year later, Khalil Deek was arrested in Pakistan and imprisoned in Jordan, suspected of terror activities. Back in California, Khalil Deek's brother Taufik defended him, calling him a family man. Taufik declined War Story's request for an interview, but said his brother is, quote, dead, and any questions won't help anything now. Khalil may be dead. After being mysteriously released in May 2001, some reports say he was killed by al-Qaeda for collaborating. Others claim he was killed by Pakistani soldiers during a raid in 2005. No one knows for sure. Taufik is president of West Coast Islamic Center and works for the state of California in the Department of Toxic Substances Control. He says his brother's troubles still haunt his family. Just four days ago, the Department of Justice charged Adam Gadan with treason. It is not a crime only against the American people, but against America itself. The case of Adam Gadan is very important. He is now the spokesperson of Al-Qaeda for North America. My question is, what happened? at the conversion so that he, after the conversion, feels that he has to go to Afghanistan and join the jihadists. That is the big question. Who is doing those conversions? But we don't know really who is bringing them and who next to the mosque is meeting with them. These are the jihadists. An enlightened Muslim leader puts himself in enormous personal jeopardy if he indeed stands up and speaks out. Have you ever been threatened for speaking out? Oh, I have been threatened many times. I'm very aware they might be able to kill me, but my message is already all over the world. Interviewing the moderate voices of Islam can be a challenge. First, we confirmed an interview with Imam Mohammed Majid. In Time magazine, he said, the terrorists are the murderers, and God will deal with them on Judgment Day. He canceled with less than 24 hours notice. Then, Imam Faisal Khan agreed to sit down with us. He's been a guest at the White House twice. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May the peace and blessings of God be upon each and every one of you here tonight.
radical Muslim. Imam Khan has publicly supported this July 2005 fatwa signed by American and Canadian Muslim scholars that declares, among other things, all acts of terrorism targeting civilians are forbidden in Islam. But when we arrived at his mosque, Imam Khan told us he could no longer do the interview. He directed us to his deputy, 35-year-old Imam Karim Abu Zaid, as an expert on the Quran. There are those who profess in the name of Islam to justify flying planes into the World Trade Center, to blow themselves up at a wedding in Jordan. And they profess to do that to Muslims, to Christians and Jews. But that's not the Islam you've described to me. The guidance says, fight those who fight you and do not transgress. The people who were in the airplane were not those who are fighting you because those who transgress are not loved by Allah. Egyptian-born Imam Abu Zaid moved here in 1993 and became an American citizen. The military operation in Afghanistan and now Iraq has been much criticized by Islamic leaders all over the world. Do Islamic leaders present Islam? Well, I would defer to your judgment on that. Do they? No comment. If a young person came to you and said, Imam, I wish to become a martyr, what would you tell him? Help the Americans understand the peace that Islam cast into your hearts and your lives. This is the jihad. Finally, Imam Khan decided he would answer some of those same questions. If a young person in this congregation came to see you and said, Imam, I want to become a suicide bomber. I want to get on a bus in downtown Washington and blow myself up. What would you tell him? I would tell him, please, blunt, that's the most ridiculous opinion I've ever heard. And there should be no reason why anyone should want to commit suicide and blow bombs and kill innocent people in the name of Islam. This is totally against the teaching of Islam.